Hello, it is so good to be with you guys today. You know, God is so good to remind us in his word about Philippians 2, 12 through 18. Paul's charge to the folks in Philippi was to remind them that he was going to be moving on from ministry there. It was going to be important to remind them to watch their attitude and their witness during his absence. In a time of such ever-changing decisions being made by our government and the many differences in opinion in so many around us, let's remember Paul's words in Philippians as he encouraged them to look, do everything without grumbling. Those were the words of Paul. Let's read Philippians 2, 12 through 18 together. It says, therefore, my dear friends, as you've always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and with trembling. For it's God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. And then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ and that I did not run or labor in vain. But even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. So you too should be glad and rejoice with me. Such loving words from Paul. You know, God says right there in his word through Paul that, he, that we will be blameless and pure in his sight. If what? If we do what? If we do everything without grumbling and arguing. It says it right there. Paul tells us in these verses that by doing so, we're going we're to shine among the people like stars in the sky as we hold firmly to these words in Philippians. You know, I can remember as the youth pastors when we'd go on youth choir tour with Dan and Kathy and Amy, Kathy would always let the group about 11 p.m. go lay on the road at Happy Isle and just look up at the sky and see the stars. And there's nothing like stars in Yosemite because they're so bright, because they don't have the competition of all the city lights around them. And I, I mean, they're unusually bright. And that's what I think of when I think of the stars that Paul's talking about right here in Philippians. As a body of believers, you guys, it's important to work together to rid ourselves of any division and discord. In other words, as believers, we're on the same team. We're on God's team. And we need to function as the same team. Paul was encouraging the Christians in Philippi that they needed to especially be careful to obey Christ now that Paul wasn't going to be there to continually remind them. And as we are attending church differently right now for this season, and we're not face-to-face -face or in person in our discipleship and in our teaching, these verses tell us to be careful about what we believe and how we live especially when we're on our own and it's up to us to spiritually feed ourselves and choose how we're going to live during this shelter in place. Thank goodness for church online, but we don't have that constant connection and rubbing elbows with each other like we had before. We'll have it again, but we just don't have it in this little season that we're in. In the absence of Christian leaders in the book of Philippians or physically being at church together, you know, we need to focus our attention and devotion even more on Christ so that we don't become sidetracked. That's one of the things that Paul was talking about here. So an honest question would be, what do we do when we don't feel like obeying those words from Paul? It's important to know that God has not left us alone in our struggle to do his will. He wants to come alongside us and be a part of the solution to help us. It's a God who gives us the desire and the power to want to do what pleases him. No, we can't do any of this on our own anyway. It's him inside of us that causes us to obey every time, right? So here's a quick truth nugget. The secret to a changed life is to submit to God's control and let him work. Next time your heart isn't feeling like aligning with what Paul said, and we're all human, and we're all going to have those days where we're struggling, we need to ask God to help us to do his will. You know, to be like Christ, we need to think like Christ. And to do that, we need the power of the indwelling spirit in us to help us with that. You know, we need influence of other faithful Christians. You know, we need to surround ourselves with um, the right people, especially right now. 
We need obedience to God's word, not just exposure to it. In other words, we need to read his word and do what it says, not just read his word. And lastly, we need to have sacrificial service like Paul did. He demonstrated that. You know, oftentimes it's when we are in the act of doing God's will that we begin to want to do God's will. In other words, step out of the boat in obedience and let God do the rest. I was talking to Javier Almazon this week during a student leadership meeting that we were all having, and I loved one thing he said. He said, sometimes the biggest struggle is just taking that first step. I couldn't agree with him more, but I think Paul's encouraging us that when you take that first step in your faith, God will come in and he's so faithful and he'll change our hearts to do his will and he'll handle the rest. All we need to do is take that first step. You know, remember these verses, they're encouraging us against complaining and against grumbling. So why is it so harmful to argue? It's simple because it's a poor witness. Belief in Christ should always unite us those who trust him. Let us be a church at Oak Park who lets the world see Christ in us and through us. Our lives should be characterized by the following, our morals so that others can see, our purity so that we can live righteous lives, our patience so that we can love others well, and lastly, our peacefulness so that we can live in harmony with others. If we focus on those aspects in our lives, we could shine like stars in a dark and a depraved world. A transformed life is an effective witness to the power of God's word. So ask yourself, am I shining brightly or am I clouded by complaining and arguing? And a final truth bomb is this. When you're totally committed to serving Christ, sacrificing to build faith in others brings a very joyous reward. In other words, you know, it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. So that's all I've got for you guys today. I want to let you know how honored and privileged it is to be the pastor's wife of this church and, and, and just to know that we get to love you and we get to serve you. So thank you so much for taking time to listen to this today and just know how much we love you and how much we praise God for our great church on a daily basis. I love you guys so much. I miss you. I can't wait to see you again. God bless you.